So today's notes is an introduction to World War One. First thing I want you to do is a little bit of review. I want you to answer the question, what was the spark that started World War I and who was involved? So write that down in your notes and I will be checking that. So you should have written something about how June 28, 1914, Archduke Ferdinand of Austro-Hungary and his wife were assassinated by Serbian terrorists, a terrorist group known as the Black Hand, and it was by Gavrila Princep was the shooter. So World War I is often referred to as the Great War. By 1914, Europe had enjoyed a century of relative peace with one another for almost 30 years. Many idealists hoped for a permanent end to the scourge of war. Some Europeans believed that progress had made the war a war a thing of the past, but in little more than a decade, a massive war would engulf Europe and spread across the globe while peace and harmony characterized much of Europe at the beginning of the 1900s. There was a less visible and darker forces at work as well. Below the surface of peace and goodwill, Europe witnessed several gradual developments that would ultimately help propel the continent into war. So World War I lasts from 1914 to 1918. And there's two major alliances going on. There's the Central Powers, which was Germany, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire. And then we have the Allied Powers, which is Britain, France, Russia, and Italy. So Austria-Hungary had declared war against Serbia due to the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand, and it sets off a chain reaction within the alliance system. The countries of Europe followed through on their pledges to support one another. As a result, nearly all of Europe soon joined what would be the largest, most destructive war the world had seen yet. Now, something that's interesting is originally... Italy had been an ally of Austria-Hungary and Germany, uh, but shortly into the war, Italy dropped out and backed out on their alliance and kind of remained neutral or slightly aligned with the Allied powers because they were hoping to gain territory. So a major plan that took place was the Schieflin Plan. Uh, it was created by Alfred von Scheiflin uh, for Germany. And basically the plan states that Germany is going to defeat France in six weeks and then go and attack Russia. So Germany was facing a war on two different fronts. Okay, So they're facing one front, the Western Front, with France. And their Eastern Front is with Poland, Russia. Okay, uh, So that's why they developed this battle strategy. The plan calls for attacking and defeating France in the West, and then they would rush and focus their attention on the East to fight Russia. The Germans felt they could carry out such a plan because Russia lagged behind the rest of Europe in its railroad system, and therefore would take longer to get supplies to the front lines. Speed was very important to the Schieflin plan. It had to be done quickly in order for it to be accomplished. And German leaders knew they needed to win a quick victory over France if they were to be successful. Early on, it seemed like Germany would be able to accomplish it and achieve that quick victory over France. By early September, German forces had swept into France and reached the outskirts of Paris. A major German victory appeared just days away. But on September 5th, however... The Allies managed to regroup 
and they attacked the Germans northeast of Paris in the valley of the Marne River. Every available soldier was hurled into the struggle, and when reinforcements were needed, more than 600 taxi cabs rushed soldiers from Paris to the front. After four days of fighting, the German generals gave the order to a treat. So the plan failed because Germany met strong resistance in Belgium from France, and Russia was also able to mobilize their supplies a lot quicker than the Germans expected. In the end, they abandoned the Schieffelin plan and retreat. So the Western Front, as the summer of 1914 returned to fall, the war turned into a long and bloody stalemate, or a deadlock, along the battlefields of France. This deadlocked region in northern France became known as the Western Front. Both sides then dug in for the winter. They did not know that the conflict would turn into such a long, deadly stalemate, and a, which is a deadlock in which neither side is able to defeat the other. Battle lines in France would remain almost unchanged for four years. Now, part of why we had this stalemate was because of trench warfare. By early 1915, opposing armies on the Western Front had dug miles of parallel trenches to protect themselves from enemy fire. This set the stage for what became known as trench warfare. In this type of warfare, soldiers fought each other from trenches. An army traded huge losses of human life for pitifully small land gains. Life in the trenches was pure misery. The men slept in mud, washed in mud, ate in mud, and dreamed mud, wrote one soldier. The trenches were also swarmed with rats. Fresh food was non-existent. Sleep, nearly impossible. The space between the opposing trenches won the grim name of no man's land. When the officers ordered an attack, their men went over the top of their trenches into this bombed out landscape. There, they usually met murderous rounds of machine gun fire. Staying put, however, did not ensure one's safety. Artillery fire brought death right into the trenches. The Western Front had become a terrain of death. It stretched almost 500 miles from the North Sea to the Swiss border. Trench warfare soon became known as a war of attrition, wearing down the enemies by continual losses in people and material. I'm going to add an informational video to Google Classroom about trench warfare. Make sure you check it out after your notes. So. Industrialization of the war, there was numerous new weapons present. We have the tanks, which invented against trench warfare. Poison gas, which was first used by Germany, then by both sides of the war, caused blindness, blisters, and death. Aircraft spied behind enemy lines in air battles. And then we had submarines known as German U-boats that dominated the seas. Then we have machine guns, which could let out 400 plus rounds a minute. So modern weapons added greatly to the destructiveness of war. Rapid fire machine guns mowed down waves of soldiers, making it nearly impossible to advance across no man's land. Artillery allowed troops to shell enemy lines more than 10 miles away. Why was chemical warfare used? So, 
on Google Classroom, I want you to go and watch this video. And you're going to answer these three questions. What treaty banned the use of chemical warfare? What was public opinion of chemical weapons? And which gas would you be most scared of? So again, that link will be on Google Classroom. Okay, so as part of your summary, I want you to answer why did the Shiflin plan fail? On an index card, I want you to write and ask one question about today's content or something that left you puzzled. Could also be something maybe that you still want to learn about World War I or something that you look forward to learning in World War II or again, something that has left you confused. This is your exit ticket for day one.